when hungry. Wild boars focus on cornfields, enjoying the delicious corn ears full of milk. Their destructive actions have many consequences, with wild boars ranked among the 100 worst invasive species worldwide. In 2007, researchers estimated that each wild boar caused $300 in damage per year resulting in a large damage control and remediation cost in excess of $1.5 million per year. Their use of their noses to dig into the soil and turn it over in search of food sources changes the natural chemistry and nutrient cycles of the soil. The mixing of soil layers that frequently accompanies digging by wild boars has also altered plant communities, facilitating the establishment and spread of invasive plant species. Furthermore, wild boars directly contribute fecal bacteria to water sources, increasing sedimentation, increasing turbidity, changing pH levels, and reducing pollution levels. Since their introduction to the continental United States by Christopher Columbus, the number of feral swine across the United States has increased to 9 million, creating significant challenges for American farmers, especially in Texas. From 1982 to 2016, the feral pig population increased from 2.4 million to about 6.9 million, with an estimated 2.6 million in Texas alone. Their continued expansion is fueled by high reproductive rates, diverse diets, and lack of natural predators. Wild boars' adaptability allows them to survive in a variety of environments, preferring to feed on seeds, plants, small insects, and even dead animals when their preferred foods are scarce. This food flexibility carries risks, as wild boars harbor a variety of bacteria and diseases that can potentially infect livestock. Among the many methods to control the wild boar population, trapping is the most effective, convenient, and cost-effective method. Thanks to advances in technology, traditional traps are quickly being replaced by more sophisticated models, thereby making traps the ultimate tool for effective population control. Although the use of trapping has proven to be the most effective method for large population reductions within the United States, its impact is often limited by the ability to deploy traps in remote areas, difficult to reach by means of transportation. After installation is complete, the hunter will spread bait inside the trap to attract wild boars. Popular grains include fermented corn, rice, sorghum or barley, acorns, overripe fruit and honey. When caught in a trap, wild boars often panic, run back and forth, and even jump into the trap themselves to find a way to escape from it. Their lives often end with a gunshot, or they are sometimes bought by wild boar farms to process into high-value food. In 2021, approximately 20,889 feral hogs were captured in the state of Texas, 
accounting for 57% of all feral hogs removed. The use of aircraft guns is an effective method to rapidly reduce feral boar populations in areas with lots of open landscape space and high feral boar population densities. However, the effectiveness of this method decreases as visibility and population density decrease. So this method is often most effective in areas with scattered vegetation and high wild boar population density. There is also debate about whether this method will change the behavior of the wild boar population, causing them to expand their living areas and learn to avoid aircraft, making them more difficult to find using helicopters. Wild rabbits have become a major problem in Australia, with millions of them widely distributed from grasslands to urban areas. Australian farmers are faced with the challenge of managing a large wild rabbit population, and the Australian government has implemented a range of measures to deal with this invasive situation. Please leave comment number one if you are excited about this content. The Australian government began its fight against wild rabbits in 1954 when it discovered an area with many remaining wild rabbits. The operation begins by using an earth blower to move rabbits from the enclosure to the surrounding area. Farmers also use agricultural products that rabbits like to poison them and spray them along grassy areas, while also placing alarms to warn of danger. After each day's campaign, they returned and harvested the rabbits, burying them in large numbers to reduce the wild rabbit population. However, after about 60 years, rabbit populations have increased rapidly, creating new challenges for farmers and the government. This demonstrates the complexity of managing and controlling wild rabbits in Australia. female rabbits give birth, they can give birth to 5 to 10 baby rabbits, rapidly increasing the rabbit population and posing a challenge in population control. The Australian government developed the RHDV2 virus in 2017 to reduce rabbit populations. But the virus outbreak has brought new challenges as it spreads in wild rabbit populations and does not infect other animals, other objects.
The primary method of dealing with Australia's millions of rabbits is through hunting. During the day, rabbits often hide in cages with their children to avoid danger, while at night, hunters use devices with heat sensors to find their location. The hunter's quietness and subtle technique are important when approaching and taking down rabbits. Over the course of about a week, they can hunt up to 100 rabbits. Rabbit hunting tricks require great concentration and skill on the part of the hunter. With the ability to move quickly and jump high, rabbits create challenges for hunters. After killing, the hunter harvests the rabbit again and moves to another area to continue hunting. This method has achieved positive results, reducing rabbit numbers by approximately 20 to 30 percent annually, helping to control the feral rabbit problem. In addition, the Australian government has implemented many other measures such as woven traps, hunting dogs in trap cages to minimize the negative impact of wild rabbits on the environment and agriculture. Weaving traps are the method used most common for dealing with wild rabbits. Together, these measures form a comprehensive strategy to deal with Australia's major rabbit population problem. Setting woven traps in Australia is a simple process that is often carried out in rabbit-infested areas such as grasslands and bush. Although this method is easy to use and low-cost, there are disadvantages, including less effectiveness than cage traps and the potential for injury to rabbits. Greyhounds are useful tools for detecting and chasing rabbits, trained to signal hunters by barking. Hunters then use woven traps or guns to catch the rabbits with hunting dogs helping guide them to the hiding rabbits. Rabbit cage traps are a more cost-effective method that work by keeping the rabbit trapped while trying to eat the food placed inside. Trap cages are often placed in areas with many rabbits, are highly effective and do not cause direct injury to rabbits. However, it requires higher technology and costs. The combination of woven traps, hunting dogs and trap cages is an effective method of dealing with wild rabbits in Australia. Lice traps are used to attract rabbits and hunting dogs are deployed to chase and intercept rabbits. Then the trap cage is activated to capture the rabbits. This combination increases efficiency and significantly reduces the number of wild rabbits. This method can catch about 120 million rabbits each year in Australia, providing a remarkable solution to the problem of feral rabbits that are causing many negative effects on agriculture and the environment. If you regularly encounter wild rabbits in your area, please share how you deal with this problem. Australia, as the sixth largest continent in the world, formed mainly of mountains, deserts and grasslands, 
has become an ideal growing environment for typical animals such as camels and fox. Over the decades, camel numbers in Australia have increased significantly, reaching up to 2,000 animals due to a shortage of natural enemies. However, this spike has brought with it a series of problems and negative impacts on the Australian ecosystem. The sharp increase in camel populations has caused competition with native animals such as kangaroos for food and water, leading to a significant decline in the numbers of these native species. Furthermore, camels also have the potential to negatively impact the environment by destroying vegetation and polluting water sources. To solve this problem, the Australian government had to change its camel population management policy. In 1988, a key decision was made, paving the way for camel hunting to control the population. Before that, camels were considered national property and hunting was prohibited. However, with the sudden increase, the government has adjusted policies to control the situation. The Australian government has established strict regulations on camel hunting, only licensing those who hunt these animals using humane methods. Hunters must report the number of camels hunted to the government. These measures have played an important role in controlling the camel population, reducing its numbers by an estimated 30%. Yep. The current kennel hunting program is carried out on a large scale with the support of professional hunting teams using helicopters to increase efficiency. This is a drastic effort to maintain balance in the camel population and protect Australia's natural resources. In addition, fox populations had also grown strongly in Australia, with an estimated 10 million foxes currently existing in the country. This is especially concentrated in agricultural and urban areas. Human impact has played an important role in the development of foxes, causing many challenges to ecological balance and biodiversity. Foxes, performing omnivores, carry out their hunting activities mainly at night, using their agility to easily reach their prey. 
This creates not only a threat to native animals, such as rabbits, birds and rodents, but also heavy losses to the agricultural industry in Australia, with estimates of up to $100 million per year. Fox hunting is not only limited to night hours, but can also be done during the day. All other active habits occur mainly in the evening. There are many areas where foxes are active mainly during the day, creating opportunities for challenging hunts. Fall and winter are considered ideal for fox hunting. During the period of giving birth and taking care of their young, foxes become more active and easier to encounter. Every year, millions of foxes become the subject of hunting, with estimates of up to 2 million. This is not only an environmental problem, but also a major threat to agriculture and domesticated animals in Australia. Australia's kangaroo population has become a serious problem. With about 26 million concentrated mainly in the grasslands and desert areas of central and northern Australia, this sudden increase is not only damaging to native animals and poses significant challenges to agriculture and infrastructure, especially in the grasslands and deserts of central and northern Australia. The ability of kangaroos to jump up to 30 feet puts great pressure on both farmers and natural habitats. This situation is raising many issues about environmental protection and ecological balance. Managing and controlling kangaroo populations requires careful consideration of local environmental and economic impacts. The Australian government has come up with a solution through the establishment of an animal quota for kangaroo hunting. This quota target is determined based on an assessment of the number of kangaroos that need to be captured to maintain balance in the environment. Licensed hunters are responsible individuals who adhere to mainstream human hunting methods, ensuring that hunting occurs in a responsible and conservation manner. In the minds of Americans, 
The image of natural balance is often realized through the shape of snakes with long bodies, pointed tails and belonging to the carnivore family. These creatures often prey on small prey such as mice, rabbits and birds, and they are widely distributed throughout the world, except in the Antarctic region. Invasive snakes, which are groups of snakes that are not native to a particular area, can have negative ecological and economic effects in the United States. Although there are many famous invasive snakes, such as the Florida Cobra, the Rit-tailed Viper, and the Brown Water Snake, in American culture, they are often considered dangerous and scary animals. This has created avoidance and hesitation in enjoying snake meat in the American community. According to a 2022 American Food and Agriculture Association survey, only 12% of Americans participating in the survey said they were willing to challenge snake meat. Americans often emphasize poultry and seafood in their eating habits. While snake meat does not contribute much to the daily diet, according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This data indicates that beef is the most popular meat favored in their cuisine. The next meat on America's favorite list is chicken and pork. In contrast, snake meat only accounts for a very small proportion of the total amount of meat consumed daily. Americans often practice diversity in processing and cooking, creating delicious and unique dishes from a variety of food sources. Although American cuisine shows diversity with many unique dishes, snake meat is still not really popular in their daily menu. Keeping with common eating habits, Americans often worry about safety and health when consuming invasive snake meat, concerns about potentially dangerous pathogens such as salmonella, E. coli and other bacteria are a common concern for consumers. Those interested in experimenting with new diets or exploring culinary diversity should pay special attention to the source and handling of snake meat. 
as well as comply with food safety regulations to minimize risk of infection. If we look deeper into the matter, we see that although some snakes are not a biological threat, they can still pose a health hazard. Some snakes possess strong venom, making their bites painful and sometimes life-threatening. A terrifying chase event is described when a man is bitten by a snake in the middle of a church, accompanied by many others. Snake bites leave them severely handcuffed and almost unable to breathe. This is just one example of the danger that snakes can bring not only to the natural environment, but also to the community. Social security and local authorities need to take careful measures to control this situation and protect the community from the negative impacts of snakes, not only on the environment, but also on social security. Texas, with its diverse landscape from desert to forest, faces a major challenge from invasive snakes. The Texas Department of Agriculture and Industries confirmed the presence of about 15 invasive snake species in the area. Among these, the red-tailed viper and venomous snakes are the most common and can be dangerous to humans. Local communities and governments are facing the difficult challenge of maintaining a balance between safety and environmental protection. Research and implementation of control measures are increasingly important, while public education programs also play an important role in raising awareness of risks and prevention measures. Cooperation between countries and environmental organizations has become a key component to minimizing the impact of invasive snakes, ensuring the safety and sustainability of communities and the natural environment. Solutions are currently being deployed to prevent population growth of invasive snake species. in any other better solution? If so, don't forget to share your comments and opinions below. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with upcoming videos. And finally, don't forget to share this video with all your friends, so they can watch and enjoy it too.